montage of you as the blacksmith in Army of Darkness, where like, that, that expression you have when it's just like, kind of hits it and he's like groovy. That zoom of like, you guys like, <gasps> like that's, with MF with MF Davis. Yeah, yeah, that's so, that, that reaction is so, even though it's like so short, it's just so like, it's a laugh. It's just so I'm glad you appreciate it. Yeah. Because we, we were wondering what to do. And I was kind of nervous because at the time, well, MF Davis went on to get an Academy Award for Schindler's List. <laughs> at that time, she was this new upcoming South African. It was still humble to be on a set with you or something like that. I mean, whatever I do, I don't want to have to do it five times. Yeah, I came out of the club. you noticed yeah, like that. That, that montage is probably one of, the, like, one of the most iconic montages. Because, like, like, just like the, the cuts and the zoom, it's very stylish. Because Sam Raimi's stylistic, like, yes. camera angles and zooms. And even, like, Scott Spiegel's work. I, I just watched the shooter the other day for the first time. And it has, like, he takes kind of that the camera placement and the zooms. And, but, like, it's just so... Because I think you have to heighten reality for things like, like Spider-Man or some of these more like genre yeah. movies to be believable because I think some people don't underplay like superhero movies a little bit so you don't believe the universe they're in but he's like Spider-Man works with it's so stylistic with costume or oh, yeah. like color or camera work. Yeah. Yeah. Or today's movies you got to jam so much in you haven't got oh. the novelty of 20 minutes to, to impress somebody with a scene. Sam has got to tell like I can do it in 10 seconds let's move on. Yeah. And that's a talent. That's that's the smart side of the camera. This is <laughs> cut to you know thirty years later. I walk on the set of uh, Spider-Man, and it's when Randy Macho Man Savage was fighting Tobey Maguire, God rest his soul, and he just couldn't get him. You know and the wrestlers that he kept on trying to hit him with a crowbar, and Sam and I and I'm thinking the same thing. He's going to verbalize. He looks he looks at me and goes, "Do you recognize this?" I go, "Sam, these are the same gags we used thirty five years ago." He goes, "Same gags, different budget." <laughs> I couldn't say that, but he could. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, but the thing is, he showed his loyalty because you see me pop up all this stuff. You know, Spider-Man 1, 2, 3, uh, you know, Wicked the Dead, you name it. So he's been very, very loyal. This was pretty cool as an actor, working with him at, at you know, when he was young, and you guys were young and going into like, two, like, huge budgets and kind of seeing that progression and his maturity as a filmmaker kind of evolve and mm -hmm. his crews, and I think it was really cool as a friend to kind of see that progression happen. Oh, yeah. And he was, well, as I tell everybody, when Sam does it, he doesn't just direct. He's the camera. He doesn't step on the DP. You know, he never does that. But if you're going to be a DP for Sam, you understand it. He's the camera. That's him. It's the director and the camera. And he's kept that. He's kept that all these years. Because, you know, his hero is Alfred Hitchcock. You remember seeing him tie every day. That is inspiration. Those the students put them together. They're Sam. He was a hell of an actor that a lot of people don't realize. I just saw, I just saw Intruder. Oh yeah, a minute. Right. He was a great comedic actor, and had he not, unfortunately, become one of the best writers and directors in Hollywood, he'd have been a hell of an actor. Funny, funny, Don Knotts, everything, Jerry Lewis. He was that guy. That, thank God he went to the smart side of the camera, not the dumb side like we're. Yeah, was there a moment on set that you can remember from any of these movies that you've been in that you kind of enjoyed? Uh, it's like a memorable moment at all, or yeah, I'm a tight. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. And I was just speaking to a couple of people about this. It's kind of it's it's pretty big, but we remember we're we're, we're friends all nine yards. So not too many people get too risque with him on a set, or play around in serious, serious, serious. But I, the reason he brings us on half the time is to have fun. He always brings us in a day too early so he can get gags in front of people on the set because it's kind of a relief for him. We were doing Spider-Man 2, and so we're on the train. We are on the train for 30 days. And there's a scene where, the, you know, uh, Toby stops the train, Peter Parker starts, stops the train, passes up, and we're supposed to be passing him along the train. Well, they dropped him. And at that time, Toby had a bad back. He almost couldn't do on two because of the back. And so they dropped him. You gotta remember, most actors are like five, six, they're not that young. They're artists, you know, basically. And I said, forget it, I'll get that. So I picked Toby by uh, the butt, and I got his shoulder, I picked him up, and I said, Sam, he goes, all right, Tim, how do you think we should do this scene? And everyone's going, oh, this guy's never gonna eat in this town again. I go, Sam, I would pick him up. And then have a gauntlet, so everyone looks like they're passing. You look close, it's me carrying them. And I said, you know, we'll pass them reverently, just like Jesus, along the crowd. And then Sam looks at me, does his little cock his head, and then he talks to everybody, and goes, oh, great, look at this. Will's trying to be a director. I said, no, but I slept at Holiday Express last night. 
and so the set went nuts and then loosened everybody up. So people are saying, oh my God, I'll never work again. Sam's so playful. As long as you deliver what you're hired for, you're coming back. That's why KB, Greg Nicotero, those guys have worked with since the days of Army of Darkness for a reason. He's talented, yeah, but he understands Sam. Yeah. Yeah. I can give you a million of them, man, but that was one that's really memorable. And that, that Spider Man moment is so like, iconic to see, like, that's kind of this, like Christ figure being lifted up. And, like, yeah. It's really like, it's so powerful. And that was kind of my idea. Yeah. 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 I mean, of course, jammed me for it. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, Spider Man 1, 2, and 3, there's a lot of great moments. And, you know, it's this playful moment. Production's a million dollars a day, per se, right? So you waste, imagine wasting a morning because something got messed up, there goes a quarter million dollars. To me, I can make three movies on that kind of money for one day. So people are really, they watch it. I have another story. It's, Sam doesn't mess with the problems. You got my agent, you got my lawyer. I'm here to create it, write, direct. And we were in Detroit two days before they had to pack up, you know, 15 semis and move everything from Detroit back to L.A. for post. One of the young producers learned a big lesson. A little kid out of New York University goes to Sam, you know, time, time. Sam, dude, give him away from me. So this kid comes up to Sam when we're all talking in the same room. And there's a garbage can right here. This kid takes off his $3,000 Rolex and puts it in Sam's hand. It's time. Sam went took the watch and went, bam, crash in this. So anyways, you guys, what do you think? And this kid's going, I almost was going to die just to get the pieces of that watch. But that's not it. You got to know what you know when you're around. And there's no doubt in respect, for sure. But he handles it in a nice way because there's a few guys in Hollywood that are like that. Even some people go, this can't be real because they call him the all shucks kind of guy. There's a reason. They filter it from all the crap. What's he do? He creates, write, direct, or don't. Don't even talk to me about a flagpole being flown in New York. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, he's done pretty well, so I guess his sister works. Yeah. But I, I'm so proud of your friend and you know the work he's done. But Sam's been gone for 10 years. He's been gone for 10 years because of Spider Man and I. Bruce Campbell's been gone for 7 years because of Burn Nose. Now. There's things happening, we're all getting back together with Modules. Sam's working on Alan Marcus too, as we speak. A form of it. Bruce is coming up with ideas that we're going to be doing a zombie wedding this spring. It's going to be the Incredibles with all the actors involved. Well, not me, Robert England, Tony Todd, Danny and Alvin in it. But these scripts, I'm reading them, wow, I missed this. So some cool stuff's going to be happening with us in the next yeah, 18 cool. months. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is, uh, kind of a horror expenses kind of movie. Yeah. Yep. It'll be fun. Thank you. Here we go. Hey guys, don't forget, how ghastly coming near you <laughs> soon. <laughs> okay. <laughs>